Good morning, church. So good to be with you. Welcome to my home. This morning, we are looking at 2 Corinthians 5, 7. And this is the Apostle Paul writing, and he writes this. For we walk by faith and not by sight. This morning, I want to start off by revisiting a term called spatial disorientation. Spatial disorientation is a term used by pilots, helicopter pilots, airplane pilots. Spatial disorientation happens when a pilot flies in weather conditions in which visibility becomes poor. And so because visibility is poor, sometimes the pilot can get disoriented, can get confused. They no longer are sure which way is up and which way is down. No longer sure whether they should bank left or bank right. It's because they no longer can see the horizon. They no longer can see the ground. No longer can see the landmarks. No longer can see the runway. And so they experience what's called spatial disorientation. For example, a pilot might be flying in a storm and there's dense fog and dark clouds and they no longer can see. Visibility is poor as they look out the cockpit window. And so they become disoriented. They become confused. They lose their bearings. That's called spatial disorientation. And so that's why pilots, they learn to fly by the instruments. They trust and rely on the instrument panel. That's called flying by the instruments or instrument flight rules. In uncertain times, we too can sometimes experience spatial disorientation. We can get confused and disoriented. We're no longer sure which way is up and which way is down. No longer sure whether we should turn left or turn right. We lose our bearings. We get disoriented. We experience spatial disorientation. And the Apostle Paul, he reminds us that in those times, we need to walk by faith and not by sight. And so in times of uncertainty, it is critical that we believers of Christ are walking by faith, flying by the instruments, if you will. And for the believer, our instrument panel is Bible reading. It's Bible memorization. It's devotions. It's worship. It's prayer and fasting. It's confession and repentance. Over the last couple of weeks, I must admit that there are days when I watch way too much news. I've been reading way too many articles. I've been checking out way too many posts. And here's the danger. If we are not careful, we can experience spatial disorientation. We can get confused, disoriented. We can lose our bearings. And so this past week, I decided that I'm going to redirect my energy to flying by the instruments, to walking by faith, to trusting and relying on the instrument panel. And one thing that I've been doing is Bible memorization. And this week I memorized Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is a powerful psalm. It's 16 verses long, 273 words in the NIV version. But here's the thing. Every single word is carefully chosen. Every single word in this psalm is important. 
There are no wasted words in this psalm. Psalm 91 is a psalm of trust and confidence in God. Psalm 91 is about divine protection. It's a powerful psalm. We are living in uncertain times. And it's a battle. It's a battle out there. In fact, Psalm 91 is sometimes carried by soldiers into the battlefield. And I thought to myself, man, if we're in a battle, if we are in a spiritual battle, which we are in, according to Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible says that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. We are in a battle. We are in a spiritual battle. And so if I was thinking, if I am in a spiritual battle, then shouldn't I too carry Psalm 91 into the battlefield? Shouldn't I engrave Psalm 91 on the tablet of my heart? Wouldn't it be great if I could use Psalm 91 because it's committed to memory and it's always accessible to me at all times, in all places, for all seasons. Psalm 91, beginning in verse 1, says this, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you, from the fowler's snare, and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge and make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I commend Psalm 91 to you. And I would encourage you to commit Psalm 91 to memory sometime this week. Maybe Psalm 91 can be your starting point to walking by faith, to flying by the instruments. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by faith sight. God bless you. God bless your family.
and God bless our world.